Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in. Uh, having to take a break from the office, uh, make a quick, quick run. Uh, gotta grab one of the youngins and drop them off somewhere. And then I'm actually coming back to the office. It's gonna be a late, late night. Uh, but I'm sitting here and I'm getting a bunch of uh, hits and calls and text messages and everything about this uh, uh, Zach Stacy uh, situation. And so I'm going to give you a, a real quick breakdown of what's going on and what's happening. And then I'm going to be done with that for now because there's so much going on and there's still a lot of stuff that I've got to come back with. But uh, first and foremost, look, we are still looking for uh, your support and help in supporting the work we do at the Odyssey Project, which is kind of funny. One of the things we do is uh, proper socialization of young black men. And the first thing, the first principle of black manhood at the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage initiative is a black man never causes harm to a black woman. Uh, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and phys or nor physically. And so uh, that's that. But show some love and support for the work we do. Uh, the way that you can support us is presented in the description box of this video. And you can do that. Thank you so much in advance. Okay. Uh, I refuse to watch the video. Uh, there are some things I'm really trying to protect my spirit from. There's so much that I've seen in my life, uh, so much that I've experienced, and I've done a lot to detox uh, from a lot of the things that were eating at me and my spirit, and I do what I can to protect it. I no longer watch videos of police shooting black men. Uh, I, I haven't stopped fighting for the families of those victims. I just refuse to watch the video. I take the reports that I get of multiple people who watch the videos and I draw my conclusions based off of what they say. I don't allow them to even describe in graphic detail what they saw, but just the, the certain principles that allow me to know whether or not it was a justified shooting. And so I haven't watched this video, but from what I can hear, it was horrible. Uh, from what I can gather in what I have been able to do in research, this is most definitely not his first time putting his hands on her. He's put his hands on her so much that she felt the need to put a camera in a certain place because she almost knew it was going to happen. Um, and for the weak-minded cats, I don't even want to call them brothers, for the weak-minded cats that's going to come up here with the roundabout justifications and um, all of this, you know, she um, incited him in some way, she set him up. Let me explain something to you. It, do, it doesn't take a man, it, it, it doesn't take a man uh, to put his hands on anyone, male or female, that he knows without a shadow of a doubt he can harm and hurt and that has very little to any uh, capacity to harm him. That's a coward. That's a coward on anything. It's a coward who would jump on an elderly person. It's a coward who would jump on a kid. It's a coward who would fight a woman. I don't care what the woman does. If she's that, and trust me, I've been there. I've been in a relationship where the woman did, didn't think she was loved if she wasn't being hit on and she did everything she could. And when I realized it was nothing I could do to save her, I left. My manhood was more important to me. My character and integrity was more important to me. What my grandfather gave me was more important to me than sitting there allowing myself to decline into something that I wasn't. And so I, I don't want to hear anything about what she did. There's absolutely nothing she could have done. Now, ladies, with that being said, keep your goddamn hands to yourself. 
under no circumstance. And see that that's the other thing. Just like it it it, 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 it takes a coward to hit someone that they know can't defend themselves against them. It's some shady shit for the person to know that a man won't hit them, so they hit them. Same principle. So you're not skating on that. With all that out the way, let's talk. Whatever this brother's gone through, whatever situation he's had, he hasn't had manhood modeled. Or he's gone through some very dark times and there's a bottle of bottled up hatred going on inside. And you see this type of behavior among certain people, specifically at, high, at a high percentage. Uh, military, people, men in the military, police officers, ex-athletes, and those are like extremely high, higher than the national average. Uh, it's easy to understand the military because we're talking about post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, anybody that is just remotely uh, aware of what, what post-PTSD uh, does to you then you understand, you know, what can happen. I mean, and it's not just violence towards females, but obviously uh, your your spouse is gonna be the person closest to you in proximity and the person you're around with the greatest frequency. So they're gonna catch the brunt of your outbursts. This isn't in any way to condone violence by people suffering from PTSD. Same standard applies but a lot more work has to be done to be able to develop the control to manage that. When it comes to police officers, still a great deal of stress. No matter what you want to think or say about police officers, they live a life of stress. Some of the shit that they some of the shit they bring on themselves by the way they handle and treat the people that they are supposed to be protecting. You know, but every day they walk out of there. They walk out there and they put their lives on the line, whether they're doing right or doing wrong. This isn't the video for that. They put their lives on the line. It comes with a great deal of stress. They take that stress home. They or have a high, a higher uh, the, uh, level of alcoholism, higher than, again, the national average. And they are domestic abusers at an extremely high rate. Uh, Ex-athletes the ability to adjust to not being on the field, the, the ability to adjust to not being the center of attention, the ability to adjust to not getting a game check that's, uh, shoot, in some instances, a million dollars a week during the season, a game check. Uh, the ability to adjust to that not happening anymore, to going back to living the life of a, a, a normal person. And I don't really like the term normal or average. I think everybody's special, but you have to find your gift. You have to work your gift. And the the physical capacity and the skill set that it takes to be a professional football player is remarkable, uh, no matter what position you play. But it's not your only gift. But if you don't find yourself Comfortable, comfortably transitioning into life after, it can be a very difficult process. I have dealt with a number of uh, former players that had a very difficult transitioning into normal life. I hate to call it civilian life because it wasn't like they were in uh, the military or something like that. But moving back into the regular place, whether it's in the workforce, whether it's at a, as an entrepreneur or an investor or whatever it's going to be, it's not the same. It's not that roar of the crowd that you get every Sunday or every night you step on the basketball court or on the tennis court or whatever it is that you do. So you see this in this instance. And, uh, you know, whether his body forsaked him or whether his attitude forsook him or whatever it was that, that ended his career, I'm not sure. Uh, he's not a player I'm even familiar with, but he used to play for the Jets, obviously. And... It, it, it's led to him being in this situation. Now, it could easily be that he was violent uh, before he left the field. He could have like been violent. You know, we saw that with Ray Rice, and it was obvious that Ray Rice had been putting his hand on that young lady for a while. From what I understand, Ray went out and got the help he needed and didn't even petition to come back into the league 
because he felt something else and more important. From what I understand from the interviews that they've done recently, that he's definitely actually changed. Uh, that can uh, you can only go by what they're saying and what they're presenting. Uh, but that that's the situation with that. But it's so many more, and obviously they're going to highlight it with it being a black man. It's a bunch of stuff that happens in the league by non-blacks that won't get the uh, won't get the press. It's swept under the rug, it's kept out, and that that will be a tendency of a bunch of people that look like us to sit up and want to say, well, it's not fair because my thing is, look, I don't care what they're doing. I think it's coward for any man to put his hand on a woman, regardless of the race. But I don't have time to fight battles for white women. They have enough protections. The sisters are the ones I'm concerned with, and I don't care what the white man has got away with. I don't care, even if the league sits up and gives you all kind of cover, it's still wrong. So what is happening in that area and aspect shouldn't matter. I'm touching all these points because these are points that have been made and stuff that the way it's come to me. So I'm dealing with it as quickly as I can. I'm trying to touch all those points. You know, the simple answer is it was bull crap. He's a coward. He's the worst kind of coward. He's a whole ass coward uh, for what he did. And from what I understand, it was not even okay. Ray Rice was, okay, you tripping. I'm going to punch you. Still wrong, one punch. But Ray Rice proved what someone, and Ray Rice is, is a very compact and powerful person uh, who was also a running back. But I don't think he's as big as, as Zach Stacy. But just one punch totally dropped her, knocked her out. So imagine what pounding on a woman will do. And obviously he's been doing it for, uh, this wasn't the first time. So we are making it about Zach Tracy and the fact that he is an ex-NFL player. But what we need to be addressing is the prevalence of domestic violence in the home. Now, there's two sides to this equation that I want to address. The first side of the equation is men, keep your hands off the women. And trust me, I know there are some miles out there. There are some women that will do some crazy, shady stuff. There's uh, some men that would do, I mean, some women that do some crazy stuff that will really test your patience. And, uh, but you can't let them, you can't let them get you to a point where you lose yourself. And I'm saying that I'm talking to men because you are my brothers. And I'm talking to you because the world will look for any reason to finish you off. Now, with that being said, women, the statistics tell me that you are just as likely as your male counterpart to strike. Domestic violence is committed by black women at a rate of 23%, 22 to 23% uh, uh, of, of domestic abuse. 23 to 23% of couples report uh, female domestic abuse and 24% men. So you're almost equally likely to hit your mate as your mate is to hit you based off of statistics. The difference is the damage you can do to them versus the damage they can do to you. Now the truth is I've lost two cousins to domestic, three cousins, I take that back, I've lost three cousins to domestic violence. Two were men. And of course, here we'll go. We'll go out with saying, well, this happened ahead. The bottom line is, if you're in a situation where there, there, there's a need to uh, perpetuate acts of violence, you don't need to be in that situation. You need to remove yourself from that situation. You definitely don't need to be in that situation when there are kids around because you're teaching children to hit when they don't get their way. You're teaching children to hit when uh, they get angry. You're teaching children that violence is a tool of resolution and it's not it's a true it's a tool of dominance and so what you've got to do is you've got to actually sit there and realize the depth of what you're doing 
and it doesn't get any better than personal examination um, and evaluation of behavior and being willing to sit up and say, you know what, I'm in a situation I don't need to be in. So we're not going to sit up and act like it's just men, but I want to talk about men specifically because of what is on the table now. Our women don't feel safe. Now, I mean, I know football players who have been abused by their mates. Again, it goes back to if I know you won't hit me, I've got the upper hand whether you're bigger than me or not. I know football players. I know active football players. I know football players recently retired. Big men. I'm not talking about receivers and running backs. I'm talking about linemen who were victims of uh, domestic abuse. So we gotta be very careful that we don't make this, it's all men thing, but that's something about a man hitting a woman as a man. And I would hope that women are talking to their daughters the way that my aunties and my grandmother talk to uh, my aunts and my cousins and my sisters. And that is, in no way should a man ever put his hands on you, but never put your hands on a man. Because the average man has been taught when you're hit to hit back. And a lot of times it's reflexive and not every man has chivalry, not every man has been trained to treat you with special care and concern. There are men out there that will perceive aggression as aggression regardless to the aggressor. And so they were taught that. And so women, you should be out there teaching your daughters that keep your hands to yourself. With that being said, brothers, do whatever you got to do in a situation where the woman is being the aggressor. Do whatever you have to do to defend and protect yourself with as little aggression as you possibly can. And once you get out of that situation, don't go back. When you go back, you've put yourself back in that situation. And now, no matter what happens, a part of that is on you. You made a decision to go into an environment you knew were hot, knew was hostile. And now something greater or more devastating has taken place. You, you've got to own some of that. If a woman cannot treat you in a way that you need to be treated, just like they are being told to know their worth you have to know yours and you have to leave when you put your hands on her she takes a piece of you away that it's hard as hell to get back because there should be something about you if you're a man that just says man it's trifling as hell to put your hands on a woman it's, to me that should be something inside of a man that has a natural inherent need to be a defender of women and if I can't if the, if you're so bad that I can't defend you I don't want you around me so that whole idea like all women don't all women don't deserve well if they don't deserve my respect and me to be defensive of them in times of hostility I don't want them nowhere near me if they're that bad because their negative energy and toxicity is dangerous. I'm damn sure not going to be living with them and sleeping with them. There's, there's got to be something in you that has that holds together an environment that creates the capacity to live at a certain standard. And, and if you don't have that, then it's on you. You know... I, I don't have to worry about my wife ever raising her hand to me. It hasn't even come close. You know, number one is, the. I mean, we have disagreements, but outright arguments, man, it may be a year or two before we get to where anything, because number one is, I don't raise my voice at my wife. And what I find out is when I don't raise my voice at my wife, the level of calmness that I come at her with just simply doesn't support her aggression. She's naturally more... You know, I'm more physically aggressive in situations where it needs it. So if it's with a dude, I'm from zero to 60. I don't spit box. I don't argue with my mother. I will touch you. If I feel like things are getting out of hand, I'm not waiting on you to make the first move. If you make me feel like it's about to get ugly, I'm going to go ahead and take it there so we can deal with it. When it comes to a woman, it's a whole other thing. You're not a threat to me. Unless you have a weapon 
And then the moment you have a weapon, you are a threat to me and I'm gonna remove myself from the threat or I become a threat to you because now it's it's not the same. It's no longer male, female. It's person with a weapon against a person without one. So you gotta understand how all of this stuff is a whole bunch of stuff, but if you think about it, it really makes sense if you're where you're supposed to be in your thinking. So when I deal with my wife, I deal with my wife in the way I'm talking to you now. When we're arguing, I'm talking to her the same way I'm talking to you. I'm not gonna call out her name. I'm not gonna disrespect her. I'm not gonna meet uh, 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 an escalating voice with an escalating voice. And then I'm gonna say, look, hey, obviously we're not gonna work this out right now. Tell you what, I'm about to get in the car and uh, I'm about to go to the grocery store. I'm about to go to the cigar shop. I'm about to do whatever. And I can tell you that's like once in a year or something. We don't argue. We have disagreements, but we don't argue. It's like, okay, I see you right there right now. I'm right here right now. We'll talk about it later. And that's it. So I said all that to say, as men, the kind of stuff that happened with Zach, uh, Stacy, is not what we need to be supporting. It's not what we should be okay with. You know, we should be, somebody should be in his ass right now. You know, somebody should be in his ass right now. Somebody should be straight getting with him behind that. Somebody that actually cares about him. I know, I don't mean the family of the chick. They need to get with him too. I mean, number one is, you're not going to put your hand on mine. My sisters would, you know, I don't have too much have to worry about my sisters. My sister's great, straight gangster. They throw, they throw hands for real. You, you, you got to fight on here. You mess with them, but you can't, you, you can't deal with my sisters and my girls. Oh, I don't mind spending some time behind my babies. So, you know, but that's the thing I'm talking about. We don't have enough men that's willing to do that. Uh, I was looking at a, a old clip from back when I was like in the tenth grade of something that I saw that like was a trip. And right now today, it's still probably one of the most gangster things I've ever seen on TV. Now, I've seen some gangster stuff in real life uh, that was just like, man, that dude just, that was that was gangster. That was straight gangster. But that, it, 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 that was this kid who was kidnapped and held for like three weeks. White kid, white man. And they found the dude. He had and took the kid and left left the state he was gone had the kid they caught him and they arrested him and it took a while to expedite i mean to extradite him from one state back to where he kidnapped the kid from well some kind of way the father found out when they were coming in and i guess you know knew where, what, what what way they would have to come out he got on the telephone that's back when they you know still had pay phones it's 1984 so uh he's on the pay phone and like his, he was on the phone with his brother or a friend or somebody like that and the friend said he was on the phone with me and like he said here they come that they were the, the the agents were escorting the guy back in handcuffs he told his friend he said hold on you're about to hear a shot walked up put the gun to his head shot him in the ear killed him dropped him right there dead as a doornail and it, the crazy thing is it was live it was live and so it happened. It wasn't like they could black it out. It wasn't like it just happened. And if you happen to be watching the news, which everybody was doing back then, if you happen to be watching the news, you saw it. And, you know, so they uh, basically, I mean, didn't, what, what, was, what else was gangster about this was he didn't do any time. He ended up getting charged with... Uh, voluntary manslaughter or something because he ended up being in trouble. He ended up doing five years probation and some other kind of thing to where I think he was on divert or something where if he, you know, as long as he didn't do anything else during his probationary period, he was, you know, he was clean. And so he did his time and that was it. It was over with. But the idea of you will not harm mine to me is the gangster we need to have. And we need to have that protection about our sisters, about our women, about our daughters. And again, this is not me ignoring the fact that women can be aggressors at all. Uh, this is me talking about specifically something we're missing in the community, 
where we don't create an environment of safety. Now, this is about the violation of a female, boo. I'm seeing it with kids. I'm seeing it with kids. I, I, I got so much stuff on my desk with just stuff that just, you don't understand what I deal with. When I tell you I got stuff, I've got stuff where I'm dealing with molestation. I'm dealing with incest. I'm dealing with so much crap where we just don't have a healthy environment where we're not creating safe spaces. And so, yes, I'm calling on the men because the men have the physical capacity and should have the physical nature to create a safe environment for everyone. You know, we can blame women all we want to for all the shit that some men love to blame them for. But at the end of the day, we the ones who are physically capable of creating an environment of safety. We can't talk about what's wrong until we create that environment and see how they respond to it. But as long as a woman feels threatened by the very one she should feel safe with, it's always going to be a problem. And any man that thinks what that brother did to that sister was okay, I don't want anything to do with you because I would probably end up having to hurt you or you hurt me because at some point you would do something shady to a woman. And don't, and again, I'm not stupid. I don't believe, I, I'm not one of the people that believe that you know, our women are just untouchable and they're just, I know it's some very hurt and broken women out there that can do some very, they, I, it's some out there that set you up. It's some out there that'll set you up and you'll be out of here and they'll do it. It's some of them that'll destroy everything you own just to get back at you. I saw one uh, that, 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 that I've been following uh, and you know, trying to find out, you know, if there's something that I can do to help the survivors. But there's one who was so bitter and mean to her kids because of their, she hated their dad and treated, the, and, and basically did everything she could to keep them away from them. Then just was so bitter to them that the two oldest finally graduated and got away from her. And the two youngest end up with a suicide pack and killed themselves. In her house, and it took all the way to right before they decided that, you know, the, the father was going to handle the arrangements that she didn't even want him to do that. And she fought him in court just so she can cremate him. And then they ain't heard from her since. That's crazy. And the kid that I'm reaching out to is the oldest son, who's basically the one telling the story. Um. And I, I deal with all this stuff all day long. And so it's a bunch of culpability. It's, it's, it's enough blame to go around. Pointing the finger of blame ain't going to change anything, but that should be a sense of responsibility. So again, we should be teaching our women how to carry themselves. We should be teaching our women how to present themselves. But we should also be teaching men that there's absolutely no excuse to put your hand on a woman, that you should have a natural yearning desire to be protective when there's a woman in your presence or a child in your presence, or an elderly person in your presence. The safest place should be in the presence of a young, virile, strong black man. And that's something we definitely have to work on. Uh, look, that's gonna be it, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. But I had, I had to touch on that. There's so much more I've got to deal with and do today, but that's something that I definitely had to put my hands on. So on that note, I'm out of here.